Hello, Olympic friends. Welcome to the Show to Be Named Later podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Voss, alongside a guy who was cheated out of his opportunity to be on the baseball bunch with Johnny Bench. Noah Storzinger, how you doing, bud? Good, good. Uh, I hear it's a good day for you. You got everything uh, set up well, and, and, and yes. it's uh, nice and smooth. Very good. Now, did you get the baseball bunch reference? That's way before your time. Have you ever heard of that show? I didn't. That no. is a, a show from my youth in which Johnny Bench was the host and he would teach kids how to play the game of baseball. It was on right before, uh, this is Mel Allen on This Week in Baseball. So that's a blast from the past. So I, I didn't think you'd get that reference. But when you're talking about positives, I would say that, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, I'm not very good with the computer. Um, but, you know, our last podcast was, I don't know if you want to go say it was negative, uh, but there was a lot of rants and raves and there was a lot of uh, talk about things that grind my gears. And, you know, not that we solved all the world's problems, but things are are, are looking up a little bit. There there has been some positive news um, in the last few days, you know, and, and my father always said, you know, sometimes the forest has to burn down. You got to get rid of all the, the clutter and sure it, it hurts the forest by destroying all that but sometimes you clear that all up for positives you know in the in the future and that's um that's what i'm looking at so let's let's start right off the bat um so first things first i just read an article uh this morning i was having breakfast uh and because i i, I want to try to stay away from completely bitching about this every time we have a podcast but did you see that apparently diamond sports or bally they're they're close to an agreement, they're going to bring back Minnesota Twins baseball on on Bally's is is what I is what the article referred to. Have you heard this? I have not heard that. That would be uh, that would be amazing because again, I have not watched a baseball game since they cut it off. So, yeah. I, I, so I need to I, watch the ball. Right, but now I would. So I would be there. The 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 two things that I'm going to complain about, and then we're going to, we're going to get on to solving real world problems. But, um, so Saturday night, I mean, I, okay. Sunday, the twins were playing the brewers and I get up and I, and I'm all groggy because Saturday night, the night before, uh, I was up at Pathfinders in Hinkley, you know, and that that's a crazy time. That's a party. I mean, they had the white side walls playing and, uh, you know, your aunt was not, was 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 grooving to the to the white side wall it got pretty crazy pretty nuts so i was groggy the next day i looked for the twins game and i can't find it anywhere i can't find the twins game and i have fubo and i you know i i, I text my buddy connor and he's like no i'm like why do we not have the twins game and he's like oh because god hates us and i'm like no i need a real answer when did roku enter the fray how does roku have how do they have access to the games I, I don't know. I think it started this year, but yeah, it's like one or once a week or something. I don't know. They're, they're, they're filming a game. So not a, it's everywhere. Not a, way to, not a way to enjoy a hangover by having no twins baseball. And then, um, so, I mean, that brings me to my next point. So, you know, that's all fine and good. And I love it. And, and um, the article went on to say, you know, the twins are done with Bally's after this year. It was only a one year contract. I think the twins are the one. They're pursuing um, how to figure out Minnesota Wild, the Minnesota Timberwolves. But now if you think about if you were a Twins fan this year, and I mean, I was given a gift by my good friend Connor um, to, to have football, but think about that. You plunk down a hundred bucks, a hundred bucks, a hundred bucks for a month or a two month rental of it, because that's going to make that, that streaming service obsolete, right? If you, if you get Twins games back on Bally's, that would completely make that there, there'd be no reason to have it. I mean, I, I, I suppose you could still what stream the world series of poker or bass fishing legends or, wh or whatever it is. I, I, I would be kind of pissed off if I plunked that money down to get just access to the games. And then in a couple months, Oh, forget about it. Uh, thanks, but no thanks. Yeah. It's a crazy, it's a crazy cycle for people. Cause yeah, you'll, you'll pay a hundred bucks 
um, a month or, or whatever it is for Fubo. And then you're switching again back to Bally's. And then next year you'll probably have to find something else because it's going to be on another fucking channel. And it's just a vicious cycle of endless disappointment at this point, uh, just to watch your favorite baseball team. I agree. I agree. But now speaking of positives though, um, I, I happened to, to be at the game yesterday and there was, even though he, he gave up a run, there was somebody that, uh, rejoin the twins as well as I, I hear this weekend in Detroit. We got some good news. I believe Royce Lewis and uh, Miranda are going to be in, in Detroit for uh, the upcoming weekend series. Correct. Yeah. They just sent down uh Jair Camargo and I think they need to make one more move. Uh, um, but it sounds like Royce and, and Miranda are rejoining the squad, which is nice. the, vi the vibes are already good for, from beating the best team in baseball, two out of three. Um, and we'll now you bring them. back some some big guys like that's that's going to be going to be great. Right. I was I was really pleased to see uh, to see Brock Stewart back uh, in in a, in a Minnesota Twins uh, uniform. Um, you know, a little rust yesterday he did give up a run, but that that's all right. I, I think it's going to help um, the Twins in the long run. Um, so those are the positives. You're getting some boys back. Um the one negative is what I read this morning. Uh, Carlos Correa is still in a walking boot, and he will not make the trip to Detroit. I don't know about New York, but um, that is a little concerning to me. And the reason that I say that um, is because there has been talk about with um, with his foot and the fact that this may may continue throughout the season, that if, if Carlos Correa is, is going to be a – somewhat of an everyday player, he might do the Byron Buxton thing and, and, and you might DH him uh, the rest of the year. And that takes away from why Carlos Correa to me is such a stud. Yeah. I'll believe it when I see it. I don't, I don't know that. I don't know that he would ever do that. I, I just think he'd rather sit on the IL for a little longer to be able to play in the field than, than DH um, but you know, I, I think we'll see him in a month or so. I don't think he's going to play. I think we'll see him towards the end of August, truthfully. Um, and if, you know, getting Royce back, Miranda back, like, I mean, if it means that's the time it takes for him to heal and we can get him back for the playoffs, I think that, that that's great. Um, but we'll see again, if he wants to DH for the whole year, I'll believe it when I see it. I don't know if that's something I, I think he would agree to do personally well yeah and 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 the point that i i guess that i was trying to make so yesterday um had the privilege to go um to the twins phillies game and the 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 last of the three game series uh one of the reasons why one because you know i'm i i'm like most people that oh the best team is in town so now i've got to go and I, there are certain players that i do like um, on the Phillies, one of them, Trey Turner, I, I think is an absolute stud. And yes, I definitely go out to spend money to watch that guy play. And so in the course of the day, I, I continued uh, to just to just glorify Trey Turner. My buddy who I was at, former guest, Chris Castino of the Big Woo, uh, sometimes my friends like to challenge me. And, he, and so he put me on the spot right away and he said, who would you take, Carlos Correa or Trey Turner? And immediately I said Carlos Correa, and which almost even shocked me a little bit because of all the things that I was saying about Turner. And uh, Chris said right away, he goes, wow, that was really quick. And the more I thought about it, I was like, now, wait a minute. Did I pull the trigger too quickly? But Trey Turner can, can hold his own defensively for sure. But I would give the nod to Carlos Correa. Now, I believe Turner is batting – uh, well into the threes, okay? Like his his batting average is pretty high, a lot higher. But he hit uh, a home run yesterday and now is tied with Correa for home runs. And Correa has got, I believe, 10 or 12 more RBIs. Than, so as I was doing my research, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to stand by it. And I never did uh, falter yesterday. I, I continue to go with, yeah, I'd take Correa over Turner. But as I did some some uh, fact-finding 
this morning. I was like, no, the numbers. So I guess that goes back to my original point. If if he were to DH, that would take away from the Carlos Correa experience for me because that and and the other thing is the tangibles with Correa versus Turner. There's something about Correa that can fire maybe teammates up, a fan base up. He's just got something. I, I'm, I'm not. Now I ain't saying Turner ain't bad. I'm just saying that I think that I would give Correa the uh, the the nod if, if it were head to head. Yeah, I, I think what you you know the numbers obviously don't lie, but you hit on it like the 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 intangible stuff of like he is a he is a leader. He is he is an alpha at, at this point in his career. Um, I don't know that I would necessarily say you're going to get the same leadership or drive from a Trey Turner. Very, very, very good player. Love Trey Turner. Um, but when it comes to the clubhouse aspect, I don't I don't know that you're going to get the same that Carlos Correa would deliver, if that makes sense. I agree. I, I agree. And and that's why, you know, and it, I, I I would be honest, I I really did not think after All-Star break, I thought Royce, and, and we don't know yet, but I would thought that Royce would have been out for a little bit longer, maybe Miranda as well. Um, but you know, it, I, I guess we just pray for speedy and healthy recovery for uh triple C and, and see if he can help this ball club. Uh, now one thing that I, I guess to me, it's, it, it's 50, 50 right now trade deadlines up in a week. And, you know, I don't think that there's ever been a year that has been, it's been more evident that the twins should be buyers, buyers, buyers. They got to be buyers. Right. And, and, you know, I just read an article again this morning and how excellent pitching, even good pitching is always something you can't ever have enough good pitching. And that's a glaring spot right now. As I was talking with Chris yesterday about um, something we talked about a year ago, I don't want a rotation of number threes. And that seems like what we've got right now. But as we get closer to the trade deadline, the more nervous I get that we're not going to do anything. Yeah. And an article I read um, was that they're going to, the Poleds don't want to take on any additional salary, especially for next year. So you're going to be look at buying and selling off assets at this point. Um, because again, they don't want to take on significant salary. So immediately that puts you out of a running to go get an ACE. You're not going to go get an ACE who's making a bunch of money. Um, you know, a a guy like a Garrett crochet, you, you're really not going to probably go in the inner division, um, and, and get a guy like him who's, who's cheap right now. So like when I'm thinking of cheap guys, I'm thinking of Tarek Skubal, I'm thinking of Garrett crochet, but guys that are in your division, you're, you're probably not going to get those anyways. Um, so you're probably looking at trading for a number three starter. And I, the guy that comes to mind is always, you say Kikuchi, who seems like we're nonstop linked with him right now, but one, I'm not sold. And two, he's making like 12 million or, or 10 million, whatever. And so I don't think they're going to want to take on 10 million and you're going to have to send some salary out. And who is that? Who, what salary mm-hmm. are you sending out? Um, and I, we, we heard it last year when everyone was hurt and we got him back at the trade deadline, it was, well, the, the, the best moves that the twins could make are just getting everyone back healthy. That's, that's the best trade deadline moves. And I hear the same thing again this year is, well, you're getting Royce back. You're getting Miranda back. Correa going to come back. That's, that's your additions right there. It's like, no, I, I truthfully like Joe Ryan is not leading you to, to a world series. He's not, He's, he, yeah. I just I don't think he is right now. Bailey Ober has been great, but he's not leading you to a World Series. Yep. Pablo Lopez has not been sharp this year. So, yep. and God bless the the law firm. Simeon Woods Richardson, man, is been a stud. But what you just said, he ain't going to lead you to World Series, not this year. No, and and that's the thing is like, play like to me. If you don't make a move, it just shows me. I understand the salary limitations, but you can get creative. You absolutely can get creative. Um, and it just shows me you're not dedicated to winning it, if them, and, if you don't make a move. And, and that, that is, that is a, a great point because um, I believe that the twins are good enough to make the playoffs 
and that's it. They'll make the playoffs, but I don't think that they're going to make a legitimate run. You, know, you would hope, okay, well, let's see. Uh, everybody's healthy offensively, and we we knock 10, 10 runs in every game. Okay, then, you know, I mean, nobody saw Arizona, Texas last year, right? Okay, so it, it's not out of the realm of possibility. However, I can, to me, it looks so evident that right now you could rent a player for four months or three months, right? You could rent a pitcher and if, and if that he's not in the picture next year, fine. It makes way more sense right now to be able to rent a guy for three months than if you're a poll ad or your last name is poll ad at the beginning of the year and going, Oh no, I'm not going to pay this guy for the next five years, millions of dollars or whatever. So fine. But Exactly what you just said, and and what what I'm the point I'm trying to make right now is that this team is good enough maybe to get into the playoffs, but not to make a significant run unless you try to get get better. And and their record against you know you brought up beating the the best team uh, in in a series. However, against really good teams this year, the Twins are four and twenty four twenty brother. Okay, so that speaks volumes to me. That that's all fine and good that you can beat up on the Chicago White Sox, all right. But but when it comes, and especially at playoff time, the really really good teams we have not we have not matched up well with. No, and and again, I it depends who you play. I could see us getting out of a wild card round, a best of three. You know, maybe you get lucky in a game or or whatnot. But but to your point, like. We saw last year how important pitching was in the playoffs with a really good Pablo and a really good Sonny Gray for a game, basically. But, um, and, and, and I don't know that I think the Twins want to trust Joe Ryan and Bailey over to be those guys right now. Right. But I don't know that Twins fans are fully backed on that. And right. it, it's not to say if you go out and get Kikuchi, Kikuchi's not that guy either. No. But it, no, it, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a rotation of number threes. Yes. And and that's the thing. You're they're not going after a scooble, a crochet, um, you know, they, whatever. They're gonna go get a number three, a, a Cal Quantrill, whatever it might be. Um and it, it'll put you in the finish line. It'll definitely put you in the playoffs. It absolutely will. But it adds, it adds depth. But again, you see how important, especially when you have these three-game series, you could throw one or two good starters out there, and that could be the whole series, it, as evident with, yep. with the Blue Jays yep. series we had. So, so they're going to need to figure something out. Or you're, I, I just... I, I think you're going you're gonna to hit a point where Twins fans are normally... They're angry, but they're not as vocal. But I think you'll hit a point further on in the future if this continues, where you'll see a little more vocal, frustrated Twins fans. Okay, it's almost like I had a hidden mic or something that you were a part of our conversations yesterday. Um, we talked about the same thing yesterday because um, I think I made that point last year during the playoffs. But uh, I, w I was telling my buddy. Yesterday, I'm like, you look at the Phillies. They, had, you know, they they started Wheeler yesterday. They got Nola today. Guys that just eat up innings and don't give up a lot of runs. And I'm like, if you have, you know, you talk about having a number one ace going into the play. You have a one two punch. That could be the series, like you said. Um, you know, and that's something the Phillies have. We don't even have a number one right now, uh, much less a number two. And if you want to want to speak about pitching. I know that they're going to have to ride this out. You know, he's got his own theme song and everybody gets pumped up when he comes in the game. But, um, Johan Duran, I'm sorry, man. Uh, he worries me. And no, no, wait, because I, I see you're, you're smiling, but I, I'm going to tell you, man, the last two games, I'm sorry, prior to, to yesterday's game, like uh, game two against the Phillies when he came in and it was 0-0, I knew the game was done. All right. Um, I do not trust Duran in a playoff game. If we are up two to one, three to three to three to one, him coming in, at least right now, I don't trust him at all. It, 
he's had a an interesting year, and I I like I, I will agree a little bit with you. I'm a little worried. I'm a little worried about Duran. Um, do I think he'll figure it out? I do. I think he absolutely has the stuff to to, to completely blow people by. And he and right now it, it that's seems my almost- point. That's my, he he's so stubborn though, and and always wants to wants to force the curve or the slider his breaking pitches when I would like to see him just gas guys on three pitches. I mean, and it, yeah. but it seems like it's, it's too much for him that he has to prove to his pitching coach or to major league baseball or whatever it is that he has. He's, and he does his, he has worked on those pitches this year, but for a lights out closer, he has blown more than what he should have this year as far as giving up runs in the ninth inning. Is it time for Griffin Jacks to take the closer role? I I don't know. That was talked about yesterday too, and I don't I don't know if he's ready for that either. Now, I do have a question for you uh, because you always seem to know the prospects before I even hear of them. But this was a guy that I did not know anything about, and then read a little bit up on him. Can you tell me anything about Zebby Matthews? Zebby Matthews, let me tell you. Um, I knew could, it. I knew Davis. Could be, I'm saying, a, a number one or two yeah. soon. Soon. He, I know. You need to watch his, his mechanics and everything. He is funky, but he is deadly. The stuff is on fire. He has rose so quickly through this system. Um, I think Did he start out in Cedar Rapids this year in, in Class A high ball? And then was like there a month, went to double A, was there a month, and now he's in St. Paul. And everybody is raving about him. He more than Festa. Festa Festa was the guy that I think we were all excited to see this year. And first of all, pitched great against against yeah. the best team in baseball. But um Zebby has been a guy that has has just shot through the system. Um he's the 19th ranked prospect right now. He started at Cedar Rapids, went to Wichita. Now he's at St. Paul. I mean, the, on the year, he's got a sub two year, a 1.9. Yeah, right. yeah. ERA. The whole year he's been under two. Yep. Yeah. He is. He just seems like a workhorse. Again, I, I want you to look at his mechanics because I don't, it's, it's, it's a good funky. It's not a bad funky. It's a good funky hides the ball. Well, um, and I, like, you're not going to see hear him a lot of pitches too. Yes. But it's a guy I think you're going to see next year. Absolutely. It's going to be fun. Okay. All right. I, I knew you would have the, the skinny on that. Uh, you know, and I, I hope that it's not, I mean, it, you talk about funky, that was a, uh, a funky lineup there as far as pitching yesterday, uh, because they, they, they started Okert who faced, I believe three, three batters. He only got one out and then they brought um, Festa in who actually did, did bet way better than I I I could have hoped for. I my buddy was like, "Yeah, we're only going to see him one inning." And I was like, "No, I think their their deal is they want to see him three four innings." Nope, nope, nope. And he did his job. So, um, but it was I you know I hope it's not a it's not a pattern. You know what I mean? Because I those games are not that much fun to watch. No, in my opinion, no it. I don't know what, because I saw it. Well, at first I thought they were going to bring up Mr. Randy Dobnak because he was working on normal rest. I thought they were going to clear. I thought they were going to get rid of like Josh Weiner or whoever just to bring up uh, Mr. Dobnak because it all lined up perfectly. And I was kind of excited. He's, Dobnak's pitching phenomenal at, at, at AAA right now. Um, and, and so, but I saw Festa and then I saw Okert was starting and I was like, this is weird. I don't, I don't know what yeah. we're doing. Um, but no, it, it, it seems like Festa is going to take Paddock's spot in the rotation here the next go around. So I'm excited to see what he, what he's got. He, he didn't necessarily do well after we sent him down the first time. No, he did. He did. A. And I was so. wondering where all this hype was, was, was coming from. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. I, like I say, it's, 
it's uh it was it was an odd deal and i i don't like those spot starts like that or the the or is my buddy was like oh it's a it's a bullpen day today and i like it's it's just hard to um to but then again you, you don't know what it now paddock is on the il right now right but when he comes back, they are going to use him out of the bullpen, you think? If they get a starter, yeah. Um, I, I just I feel like Paddock going forward, too, as a bullpen guy. Just give him one inning. He can top out at yeah. 96, just power arm. Just it, he just I don't know that starting is, is, is his thing anymore. And I also think with the stuff he has, he could be a pretty nice setup man, maybe closer in future down on his career. I mean, he's upwards of 30 or he's thinking he's 28 or 29 right now. So I just think he's starting is maybe not his thing anymore. As with Mr. Louis Varland, I'm not high on Varland anymore. No, um, no. but, but I think Festa is what I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was, I was saying, I think that's his rotation spot until they hopefully go get another starter at the deadline. And, and what's the deal with, with Randy Dobnik? Did, did he tell Rocco that fish sucks or, or like when he was up in Minneapolis, like what, what is the deal? Why has he been blackballed so much? Because I do see his numbers in St. Paul and this has been going on for about a year and a half where you're like, well, you would think, and the guys that they do try out and it seems like Dominic always gets, gets passed over. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I mean, the hard part is he's not on the raw on the 40 man roster. So you'd have to clear a spot. Right. Um, and I think that's always the, the hardest part. Um, and I, I I don't like the guys that are, well, he got a contract and he just never see him again, but he's been pitching. I mean, he got the contract, had a bunch of injuries with the finger and that, that sidelined him in 22 um, pitch well in 23. He's been pitching really well in, in St. Paul. So I, I've always been a Randy Dobnak guy. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I've always, liked, I've always liked him. And I just, I mean, you're talking about a guy like he's, technically has playoff experience too. I mean, he's been through, right. he's, he's pitched a lot. So um, you, you wonder like if there's really a guy in the 40 man that is, is you're telling me there's a guy in the 40 man that's better than him right now. I don't, I don't well, know. You I, 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 on the 40 man. Yeah. Get rid of winder. He yeah, sucks. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. My point. And that's why I wonder because we do know that fish sucks. Um, but I was just wondering if, if there was, if there was something specifically that he has done to seem to get because you know uh there were a few i mean you're, you're gonna tell me that what was his name uh uh oh the guy that i didn't jay jackson is is a better pitcher than than randy dobnik well he was coming in i mean they had caleb bush bush or whatever his name was for a couple starts too who sucked um and Jay Jackson. Now Jay Jackson, I was a, I was a little excited about him coming out from. He pitched really well at Toronto last year. I thought he would be a decent bullpen arm, good vet. But now he he flamed out pretty quick. So, and uh, is the only reason that Caleb Thielbar has a job is because he's he's left handed. I mean, what the fuck? Why is this guy still on our team? It it's the veteran lefty presence, and he's from Minnesota. So bad. He's he needs so to, bad. He, field bar needs to be a, a so whatever, whatever roles they give vets in the organization. He, he should absolutely be a coach with the twins, right. um, but he needs to be done as a player. Man, and I'm tired they're, of it. they're figuring out what to do. I think, I don't know. It, he's it's, it's done. Okay. Uh, last thing with baseball, uh, happened to see my boy, Paul Skeens. She happened to see uh, who finally was able to beat him this year. I did. Um, the fact that he pitched into the ninth inning and still, I, I mean, first loss of the year too. Is, yeah, who uh, was that too? Who, uh, who the, oh, I was going to say the Dodgers. It wasn't the Dodgers though, right? Oh, St. Louis Cardinals, baby. Yep, yep, yep. Hold on. His I, first loss of his career. And he only gave up two runs. I mean, he's still a stud. He still was. Yeah, it's. I. You see the picture of him too on the on the fence, looking at. Just. He is a he is a workhorse. He is going to be yeah. a problem right. in the NL Central. 
I agree. I agree. My boy, my boy, Paul Skeens, dude. All right. <laughs> Next thing on the docket for me, um, the Minnesota Vikings. I do have a small problem with this. Uh, waiting for the NFL to hand out any kind of punishment on Jordan Addison. Uh, to me, that was a pussy ass move, man. Um, it, you know, it was like you got two parents and you got one parent that doesn't want to be the bad, the bad guy or whatever. Wait till your father gets home and he's going to hand out the, that's to me what it was not taking a stand at all. We're going to wait and see what the NFL does with them. So it's not our problem any longer. Total pussy ass move. Your thoughts. I don't know what, yeah. I, I don't, I don't know what they're going to do anymore. Um, it, it it's. It, it just doesn't seem like they care and, and no, and it, it's trying to protect. I look, I'll, Jordan Anderson's a phenomenal football player. Um, and at this point it's the, it's, it's the cloud of being so good that, you know, nothing's really going to happen. I, I really, I really don't think anything's going to happen um, because of it. So it, it's, it's frustrating. And there are people that, well, you just, why are you just so quick to crucify him? Whatever. Like, well, he made a big mistake. I don't care who he is. I, I don't care. Too, yeah, I don't care who he is. Like, man, I I read his I read his quotes in the Star Tribune um, this morning, and it sounds like poor me again because everybody I, I went on social media and everybody and they don't know me, man. They don't know me. I'm a good guy. You should see what I do for people. That ain't the point. That's not what we're saying. And and all he did was talk about. He said, "I don't know what's going on, um, but I I you know I take full responsibility." But he did issue an apology. But most of the article was about him saying about how he had to have his teammates make him feel so much better because this has been so tough on him because of all of the crap that he has taken on social media about this. What do you? what did you think was going to happen? You know, and, exactly. and it was exactly what we said last week on, uh, on the podcast about holding people accountable and saying, this is not going to be tolerated to me. It's been how long since this has happened. And there's, there's no, there, there's been no decision whether by the NFL or the Minnesota Vikings organization. Well, what would you do if you, if you were a kid and that happened, you were like, well, it doesn't sound like this is very much, it's a very big deal then. So, and you know, I've done it before and nothing happened. So, you know what? I think people are making too big of a deal about it. I don't think so. I don't think so. What would you, you know, are you, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a believer right now that there are some people that say he just needs to be traded. I don't necessarily think. I don't say that either. But. Are you a fine or a suspension kind of guy? I'm okay with suspending him. And maybe that will maybe because to these guys, money is doesn't mean that much until it's gone after their career is done, right? So, you know, you, you, you see guys picking up fines all the time on purpose and saying, you know, you know, kind of like Tom Selleck and Mr. Baseball, where he's just destroying equipment and they say, well, what, what or, or no, he, he pays extra money after being fined. And he said, well, what's that for? Cause I'm going to, I'm going to destroy way more equipment and then start, you know, to me, it, it's the same. a suspension might say, because then that hits you in your, in your wallet and you don't get to show off on Sunday in front of millions of people, you know, but if you're suspended, you don't get paid for that week either. So I wouldn't mind a two game, three game suspension. That would not bother me. Vikings aren't going to win 10 games this year, so it's not going to matter. Did you see who happened to tear their ACL? I was, that was next on my list. Uh, and it's too bad because, uh, I like Blackman. I thought he showed some, some promise last year. Um, you know, and I think he started three games last year. Um, you know, our cornerback situation is not the best. Now, I did like that they brought they brought Uncle Shelley back, though. You were the one that texted me about that. What's your thoughts on that? I, I like I like Duchelle. I, I thought he should have been back last year. I thought that 
you know, he adds a nice energy. Um, and, and I think now him and a Brian Flores defense, I just think it'll be, it, it'll be real nice. Now, when you're looking at this cornerback situation though, I mean, Caleb Evans on the, at least on the, on the death Terrible. chart, he's the, he's number one. And I'm I know. sorry. I don't, he's, he's, junk. he's, he's crap. Bubble. He's so um, bad. Byron Murphy has his moments. Uh, Andrew Booth is interesting. Um, yeah. I, I don't mind Najee Thompson a little bit, but but after that, I mean, and now I heard they picked up a, a former Texan. I can't remember his name, but I mean, at this point, this point, I don't know what you do um, with the defense because it's it's. Well, I I've think also, the defense, the secondary is going to have trouble, but I think our defense is going to is is going to be fine this year. I really do. I've heard um, Cam Bynum was recently meeting with uh, someone because uh, I guess he played cornerback in, in college um, or early college. I guess maybe yeah. he'll play corner now instead of safety, but um, it'll be an interesting interesting with, with no Makai. So. Yeah, that. right. And that, that that one did uh that one I, I was disappointed because I, I wanted to see what he was gonna do this year. Now speaking of college now, um <laughs> Matt Rule, the, the head coach of the University of Nebraska, um, because I guess it was the the big 30 media day yesterday or whatever they're calling that conference now. And Matt Rule, the head coach in Nebraska, called uh, the Big Ten the NFL of college football right now. And then there's, there was this huge article about, you know, the four teams that were added, Washington, UCLA, USC, and uh, what was the other one? Stanford, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, or no, Oregon. I'm sorry, Oregon. And I'm going to try because I know there were a lot of fudges last week. I was misspoke on a lot of things, so we're going to try to get those things right. Um, but anyways, the, the whole article was based on these Big Ten players and coaches saying that these four uh, West Coast teams are really not going to do very well in in the Big Ten because of the cold weather and because they're bitches. All right, and I agree. I've I've never been a Pac Ten guy. I thought they are soft. Um, yeah, they do play in warm weather. They don't know what it's like to play at Camp Randall uh, in in November, uh, but. I guess the reason I bring it up is because, you know, because the SEC grabbed Oklahoma and Texas, stole them from um, the Big 12. You you basically have two conferences in college football right now, and that's it. You know, and and when is it going to because I, I looked ahead to this and I'm like, man, the world is just really, really different. You've got 16, what is it, 16 teams in the Big 10 right now? Mm -hmm. uh, and I just, if, if you're only going to have three or four conferences down the road, that's what college football is going to consist of. I, I don't know, man. It, it, it just, it, there's nothing about Oregon football that screams big 10 to me. Nothing. There's a lot of teams that do, it doesn't scream big 10 and to your point, like, yeah, I, I didn't even think about that. Um, those teams come into Minnesota to Wisconsin to, you know, to Nebraska, whatever to play in that cold weather. I mean, you saw what happened when the, the dolphins came to Kansas city to play in yeah, the cold right. weather. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. It is not it, like we've all played those backyard snow football games before. And it is so much different yep. um, than playing in the summer, obviously. Well, and, or even, even cold baseball games, like just playing in the cold oh, is so the worst. Worst. Uh, it, but, but the other thing besides the weather is I don't think USC is going to be used to seeing offensive and defensive linemen that are well over 300 pounds that can run a 40 and you know what I mean? And, and I'm not talking about just one team like Ohio state. I'm talking about a lot of the teams in the big 10, including the Minnesota Gophers. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I, I guess I'm not, I've always been excited when big 10 football would start, you know, and as a gopher fan, you'd be excited for what the first five weeks, once they got ball state and Western Michigan off their schedule. And then when the big 10 schedule started, then you're like, Oh, okay. Now we're going to be a 500 team. Hopefully. Um, but 
this year, I mean, I just don't have, you know, and I, I apologize, Marty, because I know he thinks this is the best thing to ever happen because he's, you know, his alma mater is USC and he thinks Pac-10 football and basketball is so incredible. No, it's not. And I, I apologize, but it, it's it's not. It, it's not going to make my life any better adding those those Pac-10 teams to the Big Ten. Yeah, and, and I don't know. I think my favorite part about college sports was the amount of conferences and, and just, yep. I don't know, just divisions. Yep. Right. And, and it's when you continually, if, if you're really going to for, for conferences for whatever, just larger, it, to me, it's just not as fun. It, it's right. just, now you it remember just a few conference. years, back, you remember a few years back, I think, was it central Florida that went like 13 and all and, and they, and I don't think they they lost a game all year, and they were saying we should we should have been considered for the national championship. Now, Central Florida is not going to go thirteen and zero every single year to get invited, probably to one of these mega conferences. But that's what makes it so cool. You expand the college football playoff system this year. A thirteen and zero Central Florida might be interesting. You know what I mean? But. They ain't never going to get there playing in the SEC because they're never going to have a 500 fucking record in the SEC. You, you follow me on that? And, and so yep. um, I just, you know, I think there should be a limit on how many teams are in a conference, maybe, number one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I don't, uh, 16 is way too much, way too right. much. That's a, yeah. So, okay. Um, well, let's get to the Olympics. Uh do you happen to see who the uh, the flag bearer is for the U United States team uh, in uh, opening ceremonies? I did not, but let me guess. Um, well, I think you can guess. We Joe Biden. About, huh? <laughs> <It's a> Joe <laughs> Biden. <laughs> no, he's got to be an athlete. Um, Same age as Joe Biden, but. <laughs> LeBron James. Yes, yes. <laughs> and so when I think about LeBron bringing the flag out, man, all I can I can think about is Muhammad Ali being the torchbearer, you know, in Atlanta, um, he, although he was retired at that time. Um, I did say that I wanted to <laughs> – Muhammad Ali. Uh, I, I wanted to get some – you know, write some wrongs because I might have misspoke. Now, I didn't know. This is LeBron's fourth Olympics. Did you know that? Well, this year he had uh, – was he – is it really his – I read today in 2004-2008, they and the United States won. In 2012, they I think they, they won the bronze that year. And that was the – yeah, he was the LeBrons, just, you know. Yeah. Uh, and so, I, I, you know, I was right. You know, I mean, good for him. I, I watched, you know, and it, it was kind of fun – we're going to get to this right now. Um, it, it, it's different when someone like LeBron is on the team that you are supporting, you know? And, and so um, he did some things in one of the exhibition games. We're going to get to, I, I'm not going to say it by name because I'm going to tell you right now, the U S men's basketball team, they're setting us up for a fall. Noah, I, I, there's all this hype and all this confidence about how they're just going to waltz to the gold medal game, and I'm not seeing that, Noah. I'm telling you, they they might they might pull a big boner in the Olympics, and and I'm not going to South Sudan. All right, you you need a LeBron James basket at the end <clears throat> to win by one, but they should have lost that game, you know. And I I brought that up with my buddies, and I had one. Oh, come on, Johnny. That, see, that was an exhibition. It doesn't matter. They were 45 point fucking underdogs and they should have beat it. And that would have been the United States being the Soviet Union in hockey. It would have been, it would have been the biggest upset. <clears throat> then they played Germany in an exhibition. Now Germany is top five in, in the world rankings, but they didn't look sharp in that one either as your tune ups for the Olympics. And here's the problem that I have with this team right now. They do not 
play any set offense at all. It's who whichever stud has the ball in the half court is going to make his one-on-one -on -one move and and it's either it's going to go in or it's not. You know what I mean? They run no offensive sets at all. And it's all these guys who all have to get their shots and get their points or whatever. That is not going to win this this tournament. It's not. Okay? Uh defensively, it seemed like Anthony Edwards was the only guy trying really, really hard. And if you have a team that doesn't play offense, that's fine. You get baskets on the transition because your guys are more athletic. They are bigger, stronger, and can jump higher than you. So you get a lot of points on the transition. But if you are only going to play one-on-one -on -one basketball this entire tournament because South Sudan won a journey, they were moving the basketball, and guess what? They were hitting their shots. Not the United States. And why the fuck is Anthony Edwards not starting? Uh, Steve Kerr doesn't like Anthony Edwards. Why? Because to my – hey, Steve Kerr, Mr. Mr. Coach, has not done a slam-bam job with the United States national team. I'm sorry. He hasn't. No, and, and I think that's your point of the offensive sure. struggles is – Think about the team that this guy coaches during the regular season. You got Steph Curry, and you're just running an offense for Steph Curry, okay? But you also have, you know, a, a group of 12, 13, whatever, uh, studs who, yeah, they just, want, they just want the ball. You're not running an offense because they all want to get their shot. I think the ego is too high to run an offense, and Steve Kerr doesn't want to step on any toes. And so that's just kind of what it is. And, and yeah, to your point, like they should on paper beat every team by 30 points. Absolutely. 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 But we see, you know, South Sudan moving the ball, running an offense, hitting your shots. That can win you a game against the no, best. South Sudan wasn't even a fucking country 20 years ago. They didn't exist. That is my point. All right. I don't give a fuck if it was exhibition. It was embarrassing. And, and I'm telling you, man, like, oh, lucky for them. They're not in the group of death, uh, you know, which is group A, I believe. But I, I'm going to tell you, man, I think that we, I'm not going to say we're not going to win the gold. I'm just going to say that it ain't going to be a hop, skip and a jump uh, by any stretch. Now I'll say like worldwide basketball is way better than it was. 20 years ago, whatever. Um, and you've got a lot of, a lot of NBA players playing on, you know, non USA teams. Right. I'm not saying like, I, I think the competition is a lot better this year. Um, but Wait, but I'm you're going to tell me I'm, that I'm saying it's you're not tell me that Dennis Schroeder and the Wagner boys are going to are, are better than this super all-star lineup of NBA players that the U S has no, but they're going to run an offense right? because they're That's not the Mr. Get my shots. So, yep. Yep. Uh, so, I mean, I'm, you know, and speaking of, you know, international play, I agree is way better uh, unless it's women's basketball that you're talking about. Um, because I don't see the women's team having as much difficulty, but However, they did lose to the WNBA All-Stars, led by two rookies, Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark. I found that interesting. Um, you know, and it, fortunately for them, I don't think Japan is going to give them the same kind of fight in, in the Olympic Games. But um, to me, that, that was kind of like a cherry on top for me to see the WNBA All-Stars beat the U.S. And I am not cheering against the U.S. women's Olympic team. I'm not. Um, just like I'm not cheering against their, their soccer team. I will never cheer against my own country. However, shut the fuck up. All right? And and so uh, if, if that's what it takes, and maybe, you know, that they did them a favor by saying, look, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to step up in the Olympics as well. But hats off to the WNBA All Stars for for beating the the Olympic team. Yeah, that was it was interesting. I think uh, I can't remember who the leading scorer was. I know I 
Don't know her either. She had 32, I believe. Okay. Um, well, and people were freaking out because they were showing clips of Caitlin Clark during the, during the game and how they were like, I mean, they were like boxing, wanting her basically the whole, the whole time. Um, and so well, yeah, she, only had, she only had two points, but she had like 12. Yeah. Yep. So. Right. And, and I liked both of those ladies. Uh, I believe Caitlin and Angel both said, look, you know, it was nice to win, but we plan on being on that team in four years. Um, so, I mean, we have respect for that. And that I didn't hear a lot of the Olympic ladies saying nice things about the WNBA All Stars and the rookies, but that's fine. We we've already we've already covered that that part of it. Okay, um, did want to bring this up. Uh, I don't know if you saw what happened yesterday, um, and we talk about um, keeping politics out of out of out of shit, but. Um, you know, the ancient Olympics were brought up on the idea that it was all about competition. So that meant that if you had warring city states, uh, at the time that the Olympics were being held, they had, and I don't speak ancient Greek. If my father was around, he would give me the word, but the Greek word, uh, basically the definition is the laying down of arms. That, that word meant that during the Olympics, there was no conflict at all. And the reason being was it, it was so that the city state that was hosting the Olympics could not be attacked because their defenses were down. And however, it also meant a safe passage for the athletes going from each city state uh, so that they would not be injured or attacked on their way home from the Olympics. It was just laying down of arms. No one fucking fights. Okay. Did you see what happened in the Argentina Morocco game yesterday? In the soccer game? No. Okay. So Morocco was up 2-1. And Argentina on this, this crazy flurry, like the ball hit the hit the post like three times. And Argentina gets a goal in, I, I believe, the sixth minute of extra time in stoppage time and scores. And immediately, shit starts raining down on the players, batteries and bottles. And they rush the field. They kicked everybody out of the stadium for two hours. Then they had to go. The, the referees went back to find that the Argentinian player was offsides. So they disallowed the goal. And, and no one is in, in the stadium at this point. Now, now, my point is, if you allow it, because this is not anything to do with the Olympic Games. Now, you got 1972, the M Munich Games. No, those were terrorists. That took that out. As far as fans of the game, it's not soccer hooliganism, you know, in Europe or anything like that. You go to the games based on competition. You keep your motherfucking politics out. And this is the society. If, if you allow people to disrupt the Olympics for whatever purpose it is, whether it's political or because they're, they're salty because their team lost, and you allow them to get away with it, then you've already lost yourselves. It has never been a part of the Olympics that, that you are going to fight over who wins or who loses. And I, I just really, really disappointing for, for me to see that. Yeah, I never saw that. Uh, it, it was Morocco fans throwing stuff at Argentina fans. Or they did the go into specifics, but I believe that's, where it originally, I, I, I don't know, but it, it doesn't matter. You got to stop that right when it's right, right. It starts. And, um, you see how things go around here and how people can do the peaceful protesting. Um, but no, it, it shouldn't have any place in the Olympic games at all because the Olympic games have nothing to do with politics. They never did. Never did. Well said. Um, which, Brings me to my last point, which I didn't. So as I'm watching Olympic soccer, because there's nothing else to do at four in the morning for, for me anyways. Um, I believe Russia is maybe Belarus, but I know Russia is the only country that is not allowed to be represented in the Olympics because they're assholes. Um, but I was watching. How, how can you be involved in a war? And, but you have money to send athletes to the Olympics. Like I watched Ukraine soccer match yesterday and then Israel played right after them. And I thought, but wait a minute, aren't they at war? And like, and then 
who makes, I know it's the Olympic committee that makes the decisions on who is allowed in or out. But I, I just thought if you are based on my laying down of arms rule, based on the original ancient Olympics, if you're at war, you shouldn't be allowed in the fucking Olympics. That's just me though. What if you're attacked though, like Ukraine? Well, that's, and Israel. Yeah, that, that's, that's the, the difference. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. I would just think that you would have bigger fish to fry. Even if you were attacked, I wouldn't think winning a gold medal would be the number one thing on your, or not number one, but at least one of the things in your mind. But you know, like I say, I, I don't know. I mean, with how much money we're sending Ukraine and Israel, I mean, it doesn't surprise me. They can send athletes, but Oh, that's political. Never mind. All right. All right. Uh, anything else? Olympics basketball wise, anything? No, I mean, we're, we're starting up here. Go USA. Let's go. Yeah, right. All right. Um, okay. Uh, and when uh, the the basketball team, they play Saturday? Is that their first game? Um, Sunday, I believe. Out? Serbia? Serbia, yeah. Okay. Sunday. All right. <clears throat> well, I do want to throw this last, uh, uh, a personal shout out um, myself. Uh Yesterday, I, I said I was at the at the uh, the Philly uh, Twins game, and uh, as we were leaving, young man, probably about eleven or twelve years old, was kind of zipping by me. We were walking on the on the on the ramps, and uh, you know, because I like to mess with people, sometimes I'm like, "Oh, that's fine," but uh, no running. There's no running at the target uh, at target field, and you know, the kid kind of put his head down. He's like, "Oh, I understand. Okay." And, and he kind of ran past and then he, he walked back towards me and he was a real like kind of mousy kid, like kind of quiet. And he's like, excuse me, could I have your picture? And I was like, what? yeah, sure. You can take my picture, but what, what do you need it for? And he said, cause I just like taking pictures of all the cool guys that I see in the world. I'm like, Hey, yeah, you can take now. I was at the game with a rock star and we saw other rock stars while we were at the game, you know, Chris played in the big woo. I'm thinking he's the guy that should be getting his picture taken. We see the guy from Trampled by Turtles, you know, and so I'm hanging out with rock stars, and yet little Jerry asked me uh, to take a picture. So I, I, wa I just wanted to go out on a limb and thank little Jerry for uh, making an old guy feel cool. Um, that that was that was that was pretty nice, pretty special deal. So there you Love go. It. Love it. Yeah. Well, it's the sunglasses, you know. <laughs> um, there you go. All right. Uh, Anything else you want to talk? A short one today, but that's because hasn't been a lot going on. We'll have a lot to talk about uh, in 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 upcoming podcasts because there's a lot of stuff happening. But uh, I really got got nothing else at this point. No, um, I mean Timberwolves basketball is going to gear up here soon. Summer league's done. Um, I know we didn't talk a lot of basketball, Timberwolves basketball, but. Um, a lot to be excited about yeah. there's just there's so much to be excited about it's a good time to be a minnesota sports fan so stay I, on the I, boat i agree and i believe it was uh maybe it was michael ram this morning in the star tribune said that out of all the the minnesota teams right now because it's not looking good for the wild this this upcoming year um you know i I, I don't think that the Vikings are going to make the playoffs this this upcoming year. Um, United sucks. Uh, Twins might do all right, but he was he was going down all the teams, and he said, you know, basically the Minnesota Timberwolves are your heavyweights right now. And you know the Vikings have owned this this town or this state forever. They're always the number one draw, right? But right now, I got to agree with Mr. Rand and say, yeah, the Wolves are right now the Mike Tyson, the Muhammad Ali, uh, you know, of, of Minnesota sports right now. Too bad the Gophers don't even qualify. But but anyway, you know, it is a good time to be a Minnesota fan, I believe. Yep, absolutely. All right, buddy. Um, well, good. I'm glad we've we've done actually a few weeks in a row here. That's great. We're going to we're going to keep uh pushing forward like i say we got a lot to talk about in the next coming weeks uh for our good friend noah storzinger down in kc i'm johnny boss thanks for tuning in we'll see you next time <laughs>